I'm here to present today with my colleagues in a seminar about the use of CD38 monoclonal antibodies for treatment of patients with multiple myeloma. Tomorrow there will be an additional presentation on the same topic. The presentation today was a collaboration with a panel that had each their own um, topic to discuss. The first one was by Dr. Nils van der Donk from Amsterdam and Holland, who told us about the early preclinical development of daratumumab, a CD38 monoclonal antibody that is now out and approved for clinical use for treatment of patients with multiple myeloma. So this research group and clinicians in Amsterdam uh, have been very, very active in the very early development, preclinical development of daratumumab, testing this in models in vitro, in uh, mice, to see if there was activity. Um, the other members of the panel were Philippe Moreau, professor from Nantes in France, a leading person in clinical development in multiple myeloma, and he summarized the clinical trial data that we have today using not only daratumumab as a CD38 monoclonal antibody, but also isatuximab, where we have clinical data. There is a third uh, CD38 monoclonal antibody in development for treatment of patients with multiple myeloma called the MOR202, but still we are lacking clinical data for this particular antibody. <clears throat> the third participant on the, of the panel was uh, Professor Maria Victoria Mateos from Salamanca, Spain, also one of the top leaders in clinical development in multiple myeloma. She told about uh, the pra practical manage management of treatment with uh, CD38 uh, and antibodies in general, because there are some uh, similar problems with, with the treatment. One is that you have uh, during the first infusion and in some, a few patients also in the second infusion, you have reactions to, to the infusion that could be like hay fever-like symptoms, asthma-like symptoms. So you may have to uh, pause the infusion for an hour, give extra medications to cope with that, and then you can resume the infusion and finish it in one day. The second infusion is often much easier, and from the third infusion and onwards, we see no problems with these infusion-related reactions. And we are used to those reactions also from other antibodies that we are using in hematology like rituximab. So that's quite similar. The other aspect uh, Marie uh, Victoria Mateos told us about was the fact then that red blood cells have very small amounts of CD38 uh, protein on their surface. So daratumumab is bound to the red blood cells. It does not cause any damage there. It's just sitting there. So there's no shortening of red blood cell life. They are still in the circulation. But it causes some trouble for the blood bankers. If they need to find blood that can be used for transfusions, they have some signs of what they call ir irregular antibodies in the serum of the patient. And they're wondering, what is this? So it's really important to have a collaboration between the clinician and the blood banker to, to inform the blood bank that now the patient is starting treatment with daratumumab and you'll see this phenomenon and you know by instruction how to handle that. So that's very important. And the third aspect is that when we measure a disease in myeloma patients, we look for an M component in the serum and we want to see that decline and disappear with treatment. But what happens when we give the antibody is that this antibody appears as a small M component. It looks like an M component in the patient's serum. So that can be misleading because when the patient has responded very well to treatment, you will still be observing this very small M component and you think that the patient is not in a complete remission. But that could in fact be the case. So an assay has been developed to discriminate between the patient's M component and the antibody you are infusing, infusing, infusing to the patient. So you can really decide if this is a therapeutic antibody 
or the patient's M component. And if you are sure that this is uh, the antibody, then you go ahead for a bone marrow examination of the patient to confirm that the patient is indeed in CR. I think for the medical doctors that are responsible for treatment of patients with multiple myeloma, this conference, the European School of Hematology, offers them a comprehensive overview of the complete field of uh, uh, that is needed for doctors treating patients with multiple myeloma. I think that every aspect of that is important for the clinical management of patients has been covered by this, uh, this uh, uh, meeting over a few days. I think it's very well organized. I think the conference is a great success with many participants and they are really attending the sessions. That's nice to see. Even if it's a busy, busy schedule from early morning to late afternoon. People are there in the room and attending the sessions. That's great.